All right, continuing on. Concept four, uh, very brief. I just want to mention that, um, again, drag forces always point opposite the direction of motion. That includes friction and other fluid resistances. Friction, though, doesn't depend on velocity. Um, as you saw, the force of friction is independent of sliding or how f how hard you're, you're pushing while something is sliding or how fast it's going. But other forms of re resistance aren't necessarily. Air resistance is uh, proportional to velocity. Sometimes, depending on the fluid, uh, force drag is proportional to V. Sometimes it's proportional to V squared, um, etc., etc. What I'm going to do in concept six is to uh, show you how to use differential equations to uh, solve for velocity or even time uh, for this, any of the, some of those situations. I'm not going to do V squared. You could try that on your own. But I'm going to do V when velocity is just um, when drag is the only force, and also V when gravity is mixed in, and we'll we'll go from there. So let's try that. Okay. So let's say, for example, hint hint, that there is an object moving through just sliding, right? It's sliding sliding, sliding, in a vacuum, sliding this way. And then suddenly, it passes through a force field. And on this side of the force field is air. The floor is frictionless the whole time. force field doesn't affect it magically. It's magic. Over here, there's vacuum, nothing. So here, there's essentially no forces, just sliding. This is not a force. This is a velocity vector. So it's moving at a constant velocity because there are no forces. Well, I guess there's a normal force, and there's gravity. But those cancel each other out. Don't even play a role in, in this situation. So what happens to its motion um, when it hits air? Well, as you know, it's going to slow down and eventually come to a stop. Um, what, how does its speed depend on how long it's moving? So its speed and its time are related because uh, as time goes on, its speed is going to drop. How is, what is that relation? Let's do a net force diagram of the block when it's in here. So a free by diagram, I should say. So it's really just one thing um, that's important, force drag. It's also got gravity and normal force, but those are equal and cancel out and don't play a role in this problem. So we just got force drag. So our net force equation is F net equals uh, and we'll say this is the positive direction and this is the negative direction equals negative F drag. And let's say F net is M A net. And that equals negative. And let's say the force of drag is dependent on velocity, not velocity squared, like I gave an option, but just velocity. And some, some coefficient of air drag, K. So what makes this tricky is that we have uh, two time-dependent variables in here, acceleration and velocity. And in fact, acceleration is the derivative of velocity. So just normal calculus isn't going to help us here. Uh, another way we can write this is in that derivative form, m derivative of velocity with respect to time equals na negative kv, right? Um, so now we can see there's a velocity term here and a velocity term and basically a time 
sort of term going on here, right? Why don't we um, rearrange this? It's kind of a algebraic hand wave. I wouldn't necessarily think of it as algebra, although it's been a while since I formally took this in calculus, so uh, I, I've never gone back and really taken a solid look at it, but I remember how to do it. And so what you could do is multiply both sides by dt. And again, I, I'm not quite so sure this is actually pure algebra, but it works. So you get m dv equals negative k v dt. And in fact, let's uh, since we have a velocity here, and this is the partial, this is the derivative with respect to velocity, we'll bring the v over. Oops, sorry. Bring, uh, yeah, that's right. To, and also divide m on both sides. So bam, bam. So this turns into um, one over v right here. Derivative with respect, partial derivative with respect to v equals. You know, why do you do that? Silly, silly, silly. 1 over v dv equals negative k over m dt. So now we got a partial derivative with respect to velocity, partial derivative with respect to time. And I apologize if my vocabulary is not succinct or totally correct. The method is sound anyway. So now we could integrate both sides with respect to each, each whatever this is called. Uh, so let's do that. And since this is a constant, we can just keep that outside the integral. We'll integrate time from 0 from the beginning to the end at some time t. And we'll integrate velocity from the initial velocity to some final velocity. And so let's do it. A couple ways to uh, do this. First off, let's integrate. Um, the integral of 1 over v is the ln of v. So you just do ln of this uh, v, and then you plug in this term, and you do the same, and you plug in this term, and you subtract them. So it looks like this. This is uh, this is calculus integration. If you haven't had this in calculus yet, uh, you will at some point, hopefully soon. If not, this is just how you do it. Maybe I'll, I'll do a little more detail here. The integral of 1 over v is ln of um, something. In this case, ln of v here, right? Um, and then when you integrate, this is the final. You have to integrate between the final and the initial position or initial um, values or variables, I guess. And it's always final minus initial. This is a change in, it. so it's final minus initial. That's why we did in this form. And you stick in the final here. And the initial here, and that's that's that term. And then we got um, negative k over m. The integral of just a constant is just a, that variable, and so we do that variable final minus negative k over m initial, which is 0. So that means this whole term goes bye-bye. And we put the final in here. And so we get, uh, so let's solve this for t. This becomes ln. And if you subtract two lns, then you can stick them both in the one ln term and divide them. If you add them, you could do the same but multiply. And that equals negative k over mt. So t equals negative m over k ln of v over v naught. And so you can see the relationship between time and velocity. You have your initial velocity, and as time goes on, um, your velocity at that time would equal this. Uh, what does that look like? Let me pause this and bring up a calculator. Alright, here it is. Um, so in our y equals function, we're going to put uh, just negative. We'll get rid of. The, we'll say all the constants equal one, 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 and one. So negative ln of x. So x-axis is velocity, and y-axis is time, 
and what does that look like? No, uh, it's a little backwards, a little weird to think about, but if the x-axis is velocity, then and the y-axis is time, so you have to look this way. As time goes on, time when time is zero, your speed is whatever it is up here. That depends on the initial condition. Here it's one, so I guess our speed is one. Yeah, our initial speed is one. That's what we said. And then um, as time increases, you look over and see what happens to your velocity. And it looks like the velocity gets closer and closer to zero. And eventually, it um, looks like an asymptote probably at zero, I would say. And so that's the relationship between time and velocity. Uh, we could also solve this for v and see what that looks like. Let me uh, pause this and bring this out of the way here. I'll be right back. OK, so what we can do from here is instead of solving for t, let's take that over here. Um, let's take the e of both sides because e cancels out ln. So we got e to the ln of v over v naught equals e to the negative k over mt. So I just took the e of this side and the e of this side. Those cancel, so we get v over v naught equals e to the negative k over mt. Multiply both sides by v naught, so we get v equals v naught e negative k over mt. And again, we go to graph this, um, y equals, um, let's make this clear, let's make this, let's just say the initial velocity is 1, so second e to the negative x, I'll we'll make all these other variables 1, and graph, what do we get? So you can see again, now the y-axis is velocity, the x-axis is time, so we start at a velocity of 1 if we've made our initial 1, which we did. And you can see as time goes on, our velocity decreases, and there would be a horizontal asymptote here. So, um, you know, I want to do uh, this with um, gravity as well, and as only 12, I don't think I'm going to have time, so I'm going to try to fit that in with circular motion in a third and final video. So let's stop this one here, just shy of 13 minutes. And see you the next time.